Hey, everybody. Is Starfield good? Is it bad? Is it great? Is it terrible? Well, let's find out. It's time to give it the business. Let me tell you a little bit about my experience with Bethesda's games first. It was back in 1996 or 1997 uh, I went to visit my in-laws and my father-in-law, who was really big into video games, was uh, playing this this like first person game and I watched him run around. It was like a fantasy game and this, this seemed to be like this huge world that he could run around in. And I watched him play for about 45 minutes. I pulled up a chair. I sat right behind him and I was just in awe of it back then because I'd never seen uh, like a first person open game world quite like that with so much, so much freedom to roam around and do whatever you wanted. So, uh, I asked him what it was and he said, well, it's this game called Daggerfall. Daggerfall, never heard of it. And then I looked at the box that he had on the shelf and it had like this really ugly, like, like skull or mummy thing on it, uh, skeleton. And I thought, okay, I don't care what the picture looks like on the box, although it's kind of cool, to be honest. But the game that he was playing, it looked so cool. So I immediately went out and bought it, installed it that night. And I think I played for like 18 hours straight, right? Like through the night, into the next day, into the next night. It was uh, it was awesome and got a lot logged a lot of hours into that game. Uh, of course, that was, you know, before the Internet, we still had to install games uh, probably then it was on CD, maybe could have been those little floppy disks. I can't remember. And after Daggerfall came out, there was Morrowind and then Oblivion and then Skyrim. And uh, I, I never really logged that many hours into those games. Uh, I had a few problems with those games. And, and besides, the online revolution had started and Ultima Online uh, was like the first big like fantasy game that you could run around with just tons of people and play. And so I played that a lot. A couple of other favorites like uh, this cyberpunk MMO uh, called Neocron, the Star Wars Galaxies, and then, of course, World of Warcraft. I played for so long. Eventually, I lost interest in MMOs, but I sort of played MMOs for a long time. And then I, I discovered uh, survival games, yeah, games like... Minecraft and Seven Days to Die and one of my favorite space games of all time um, is still going now. I still play it. It's called Empyrean Galactic Survival. If you're really into a great space game with some with survival elements, you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's a small development team and it is just amazing. I'm not I'm surprised that the game isn't bigger than it is. Uh, you know, then, of course, No Man's Sky caught my interest, lost interest in that because there wasn't a lot to it in the early days. A lot of patches since. And after uh, Starfield, now I'm really interested to go back and try that a little bit. But but actually, I, I've been I reinstalled Imperium Galactic Survival and I'm playing it again. Took a probably haven't played it much in about a year. Been focusing on Valheim, of course, if the regulars to my channel know that I do a lot of Valheim, sort of built my channel off of Valheim, but I'm going to start covering other games. There's just so much out there. And of course, I still want to cover Valheim whenever, you know, there's something new to report and new things to try. But back to Star Bethesda and Starfield, my one of my biggest problems with Skyrim was that you really only had two slots. You had your right hand and your left hand. And I was so used to in MMOs, you have all your hotkeys or your quick slots you know, you could assign one through 10 and some of them let you use the plus and minus key too. Some of them even let you use the uh, tilde key, you know, right next to the one. And so you you could quickly get up there and activate whatever spell or, or item that you wanted. And that was great because you had to be strategic with what I, which items you put into your hot slots because most games, whether they be online or even some of the single player ones, if you, you can't pause the game and swap out a spell or, or an item or uh, heal yourself, you just can't do that in most games. But in Skyrim, you only had two slots, right and left. 
You have tons of spells, tons of abilities, tons of magic items, tons of weapons, armor, all this stuff. And you only have two slots left and right. And you had to pause the game. You had to pause the game. So you're in action. They're shooting at you. They're, you're being attacked. You're almost dead. Pause the game. Heal, equip stuff, put something else in the right and left hand, cast that spell, use that ability, pause the game again, re-equip your weapons. It just, it slowed the game down so much and it removed any immediacy. No strategy. You could just sort of pause the game and figure it out in the moment. And I didn't want that. I want to run in. You know, sometimes you're prepared, sometimes you're not. And if you have to come back or whatever, or you're trying to plan for it, you tr you plan for it. And then whatever happens is happening live. And you either survive and win or you die or run away. And that's not Bethesda's games. They don't do that. They let you pause. And at least in Skyrim, back when I played it, I don't know if there were mods or if they ever changed it, but it was just right and left hand. So I don't have a lot of hours logged in those games. I did love the exploration. I love the open world. I just, I just hated that. And the interface, yeah, it wasn't my favorite. I know a lot of people love it. Hey, I'm not saying anything is bad, really. I'm saying it's bad for me. And it's bad for people who want thing, the same, similar things that I want out of a game. So all I can tell you is, is, are things good or bad? Well, it's based on what I'm looking for. And I've tried... You know, I've been playing games since Atari 2600. I've watched them evolve. And uh, the interface and, and inventory systems, uh, when you go... So, let, I mean, let's go to Starfield. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, kind of all over the place. But with Starfield, you it's really designed for a console game where you don't have a keyboard with lots of keys you can assign and a mouse where you can just reach up and grab and manipulate whatever you want. So they don't let you grab and manipulate stuff with the mouse like that. Most games you have an inventory box and you have different things in there and you can sort of sort it how you want. That's actually part of strategy, part of customizing how you experience the game and what, how you access your, your, your items and your, your abilities is you have a box and you have quick slots and you can just pull from your abilities into the quick slots or pull right from your inventory box into your quick slots. When I logged into Starfield, I looked around and I can't pull anything into the hot slots to the quick keys. I didn't understand how even to move things to the quick, quick keys in the first few hours come to find out that so the inventory is basically just like a bullet list and you click and it opens up the bullet and there's more things in there and you click on it and or you like push b or something on the keyboard you can favorite it and then choose which uh, quick slot to put it into but if you just want a container where you can organize it yourself to have access to the, your items and grab those things, put them into another container where for storage or pull them quickly into your quick slots. That's not Starfield. Starfield is made for the console. I mean, and there are games that do have like inventory, you know, boxes that you pull from and so, even Valheim and somehow they make it work for console. So I don't understand Starfield. Look, I'm a filmmaker. I've been a filmmaker for over 25 years. I've been a writer, director, producer. I live in the, uh, California Bay Area. We have some of the biggest high-tech uh, companies here, software and hardware. And I have made, you know, huge videos and, and long series for these companies over the years, training videos, interactive videos. I've worked on websites. I've done so much. And one of the key things that they focus on is the user experience. What is it going to be like for the user to get in and use the thing? Well, to get into Starfield and use it is the most painful thing. Now, those of you who are used to console games or used to Bethesda's games that get ported, uh, you know, to console or to PC or back and forth, however they do it, especially Starfield, that is a console game first. And I still think the console players would rather prefer something like a container system like that Valheim uses and Minecraft and, and, and just about every other game that I can think of. 
uh, a container system where you pull things back and forth. You pull them into your hot slot. This, this bullet point system, I mean, you can't even, like when you're going through your inventory in Starfield, you've got your inventory, you've got your companion's inventory, and you've got your ship's inventory, and they're just different bullet lists, and you can't pull items in between those, those, those locations. Instead, you have to go onto a bullet list, and you can only go through the bullet list with, um, I forget which key it is, but you go to the next um, bullet list for the next inventory, the companion, and then the ship, and then yours, and then the companion and the ship. You can't go back, or at least if you can, I didn't, I didn't figure it out. And that's just one of the things with Starfield. It just doesn't tell you how to do things. They don't have enough hotkeys listed on the screen to, to tell you how to do things. Take Baldur's Gate 3, by the way, um, as a great example, because it's an RPG. Sure, it's top down, isometric. Yeah, but it's storytelling and it's a different way that you interact. It's turn based. But everything you look at on the screen, there's a little letter everywhere and you can mouse over things and it gives you these descriptions of how to do things or what things are with the hotkey and everything. So you never feel lost in Baldur's Gate 3. But in Starfield, you're absolutely lost. You have to try smashing the keyboard and, and jiggling the mouse and spend a lot of time in the, uh, the key binds to try to figure out what's going on and what to do things. And forget, it, forget the inventory. It's absolutely ridiculous. That's why I brought up the fact of being a filmmaker for 25 years and working with all these high-tech companies in the Bay Area. The user experience has to come first. And then you build everything around that. If you have this great big world with all this amazing role playing and great locations and storylines and all this stuff, but I have to wrestle with your user interface, that kills it for me. Absolutely kills it for me. And then when I'm in the action, guess what? I need to heal. Yes, I can put a few things into quick slots, but I can't see my quick slots on screen. Just like up all the time, like in most games. So I can't just glance down at my quick slot, see what I need, and then activate it. I have to hit a key to bring it up, which pauses the game. Or I uh, hit tab or escape and then go through my inventory and, you know, use a healing item or re-equip something. It's just, it just kills the immediacy. Plus the fact, like I said, you're wrestling with a terrible, terrible interface. Okay. That's for me. And I know because I've read and I've seen, I've read articles and I've seen videos online. I know that some people are really enjoying the game and that's awesome. Please go and play the game. And if you think after seeing other people play the game, uh, I have a five hour live stream where I play, I try to really enjoy it. And, and a lot of these problems present themselves as I go through those five hours. Maybe check it out. It might be entertaining if I can be entertaining for you on there. But at least you'll see some of the, uh, the problems that I had. Maybe that doesn't bother you. Maybe there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you enjoy. Uh, but not for me. So for me, I have to say this game is not just bad. It's terrible. It is terrible. Now, I've, I only logged in about 12 hours, but 12 hours, I shouldn't be feeling this way. If the game gets good at some point, they can never get past the interface problem because that doesn't get better as I progress in the game. It's always the same interface, always the same inventory management system. So there's nothing that can be done about that. Maybe mods will fix it, but I'm not willing to sit around and and log in hours in a game that I'm frustrated to play that has no immediacy in the action. Yes, it's not a space simulator. Yeah, you can't fly down, you know, to the planet and fly around the planet. And which is, is really, it's ridiculous that you can't do that. I'm sorry. You say that that's not what you know, that doesn't bother you. That's fine. It doesn't bother you. It bothers so many of us because even Imperial Galactic Survival, a game that they have hundreds of planets they have our role-playing content. They have survival elements. It is like the best of all worlds. Just it's a smaller game, so the graphics aren't as good. And it's been around for a little while, but they do keep updating it. They have improved the graphics. They have improved a lot of things. And they managed to let you fly from the ground, from the planet, to space. 
You can fly around the planet on the planet in the atmosphere. You can fly around the planet. You could, then you could just go into space and fly around the planet, then fly to the next planet, fly to a moon, fly all around the solar system, warp to another solar system and do the same thing. Get out of your ship and run all the way around the world. Oh, and they have vehicles. They have vehicles and they have jet packs and booster packs and they have everything. They have basically it has everything. It has everything without the budget of No Man's Sky or or Starfield. Like Starfield, I don't I guess they just want to try to keep it to the same console way of doing things from their older games because that's what people are familiar with. But I work in Silicon Valley. I work in the tech industry and they focus on the user experience. And when you go into a game, you don't want to wrestle with it. You want to go in, use it easily and then have like a certain experience. And they totally could have done that. All they had to do is look. Okay. You're working on a a space game for eight years. There are other games out there before you started, but even, even so I know it would have been a huge thing to say, Oh, we've done this, our interface and everything like this. But look, other people have been doing it like this. Even Ultima Online, as bad as their inventory was as being one of the first like M- big online MMOs, it was basically a bag, a container, and you just pull items into it. There were no slots for the items. The items just sat anywhere you put them in the bag, and you couldn't even cover items up with other items. That was actually a strategy in that game, because when you die, your bag would drop. And before your friends could come over and try to kill the person who's looting your bag, because they have to loot the items out of your bag one at a time. And if you put some, have something really good in your bag, you could bury it beneath a whole bunch of robes and other things, right? So they're clicking each item because they have to take it one out of time. Actually, I think they had to click it and then drag it over to their inventory and then click and then drag it over, if I remember correctly. And uh, But even that's better than Starfield. Eventually, the gaming industry realized that you need slots for each piece of gear. I was initially, I didn't like that initially because I was so used to Ultima Online where I could just put it anywhere in my inventory and cover up things if I wanted to. And don't worry, I'll figure it out by moving stuff around. But then once things just went into these predetermined slots and each slot held its own piece of gear and you could pull it into a quick slot so you had access to it quickly, it's like they figured out the easiest most intuitive, most live action. So you're in the game and you're doing the thing that you're, whatever it is you're doing, it's live, it's happening. And you have quick access to everything. Not Starfield. Starfield is a, it's, it's a mess. They, I mean, eight years, what can they do? They have to overhaul the whole game. The whole interface is everything about it is terrible. In my opinion, for what I'm looking for. I just want to keep qualifying that because to say something is good or bad, if you're enjoying it, to have somebody tell you it's terrible, that's not fair to you. You like it. That's great. You, if, if you can put up with that system or maybe you even prefer that system, that's great. You prefer it. I don't. I hate it. And I know there are so many more people that hate that user interface experience, the inventory management the fact that you can't actually travel in space and to the planet and run around freely and the, just the content's not there for me. Uh, the first 12 hour, actually the first five hours of my first live stream I was kind of bored. Well, I was frustrated with the, with the interface, but I was bored. And then the next seven hours or so a total of 12 hours, I was so bored by their role-playing system, talking to these, Blank stare people who just talk to you eyes open and they don't seem to have much emotion. (laughs) Watch a Baldur's Gate three cut scene like it's it's more cinematic. They they shoot it over the shoulder of your character, over the shoulder of the character that you're talking to. And the characters emote and they're moving. And it's it's like it's like I'm watching a movie during their cut scenes when their NPCs are talking to me. In, in Bethesda games, because I know from their other games are similar, but especially Starfield in 2023, it's I'm I'm this little NPC and I got wide eyes and I have some facial expressions that are kind of weird. And 
if the light is hitting them wrong in that game too, it's like, Oh, it looks terrible. Uh, so anyways, yeah, Starfield. Yeah. So let me tell you about Bethesda too. So I ordered the constellation edition. I ordered it back in June and I, I did put up a video about it. Not many people watched it. So I'll just give a brief summary here. And I, I even took it down. I took down like all four or five of my Starfield videos because I was trying to catch the algorithm, trying to get into the game. And I just so frustrated with the game. I just didn't want to deal with it. I just pulled those videos down. I just want this one, one review to be out there so that before you go out and spend your money, uh, that, you know, I mean, there's plenty of peop other people out there, bigger channels in mind for good and for saying it's good and some saying it's bad and why. But uh, Bethesda, they, I, I ordered from Best Buy. And I thought I'll pick it up a few days before so I can preload and then join everybody uh, Thursday at 5 p.m. That's when it released for us here in California. And nope, nope. Bethesda had a contract with Best Buy to not release it until the first. I called Best Buy before to, to verify. Then just hoping that maybe they would release it to me. I went to my store on Thursday to pick it up and they took it out. They put it down in front of me. It was like a foot away from me. And I was like, oh, are they going to give it to me? They went through the computer and said, oh, sorry, this I can't give this to you. Not until tomorrow. So there's that, you know, three hundred dollars and and we don't get to play on release day. So failed, you know, big failure there on Bethesda's part. But uh, then when I finally did get the box, uh, this Constellation watch, which they announced a long time ago, um, it came. It sort of seemed to work OK. Uh, got my 10,000 steps in the first day. And then every day after that, after charging it, uh, it, it would just l load to this uh, screen that had like the operating system or something uh, code on it and like a version number. And it would never go back to the regular screen and, and would never work again. I tried the soft reboot they recommend, the hard reboot, the factory reset. I probably did all those 20 or 30 times. Never worked again. So today... Before I made this video, I packaged up the everything, put it in the box, the watch, the game, everything, took it to Best Buy, said, I don't want this. I want a refund. I look at the computer and the young man tells me, oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, this collector's editions. All we can do is a uh, swap it out. Like we can't, you, you know, you can ch exchange it, but you can't get a refund. I could get a refund. It's only been a few days. This thing is terrible. The game is terrible. I mean, if you buy the game on Steam, you can get a refund if you only play it for a few hours. But I said, the watch doesn't even work. Like, it's defective. Take it out of the box and look at it. Try it. So he did. He took it out of the box. He played with the watch. He couldn't get it to work either. So he called his manager over. He says, this is a defective watch, which was, you know, I think the game base price is like $70. But... Uh, my uh, the Constellation Edition is three hundred dollars, so a huge portion of that box is the watch. You know, it comes with some other knickknacks in there, but it's mainly the watch. The watch is defective. I mean, yeah, maybe eventually they'll come out with you know an updated software for the watch that'll fix these issues. But their email support is terrible. I emailed them telling them, "Hey, look, the watch isn't working for me. I tried the soft reboot, the hard reboot, and I uh, did the factory reset." And I sent it off to their support ticket. The support ticket responded to me. Guess what it said? If your watch isn't working, try a soft reboot, a hard reboot, and a factory reset. <laughs> of course. So like an automated message, right? Like it read my email, saw that I was having a problem with the watch. So it just sent me like this first email. Yeah, I tried all that. It didn't work. The thing is not working. It's FUBAR. It's dead on arrival. <laughs> Uh, so, so the, the young man at Best Buy called his manager over and they were, they, uh, the manager overrid it because the watch was defective, uh, at least the software in the watch. And so they weren't supposed to give me a refund. So buyer beware, if you get your constellation, especially if you order it from somewhere and have it shipped to you, like Best Buy is a retail box store, not too far from me. So I can walk in and complain, you know, and they're a huge corporation. They want happy customers. So. $300 is no big deal for them, right? So, I mean, it's like, that's why Costco takes everything back, right? Like 
within a year. Actually, I t- I've taken things back way past a year, two or three years, and they've taken it back. But yeah, back to Best Buy. So yeah, they overrid it because the watch was defective and they gave me a refund. Thank goodness, because I don't want the game. I don't want an exchange. I don't want a watch that's a huge reminder of this game that I think is bad. I think is worse than bad. I think is terrible. I think it's poorly, poorly conceived. Are there a lot of good things in the game? Yeah. I've seen people cover them in videos, you know, 15 things I wish I knew, secret tips and tricks, uh, you know, just all these different things in the game uh, that you know, the people who have had access to it for the last two week, two or three weeks have been covering. There seem to be some good things in there, but I can't get past the interface and the inventory management. And the story was the first 10 or 12 hours. It's just so boring. I didn't care. I kind of didn't really know what to do or wasn't really motivated to do anything, even though like I had all these side quests with, w- you know, and the main quest, I just like, I tried to do some of them and I'm just so bored. <laughs> Take Baldur's Gate three moment one, you're in the action, right? You're in this n- big Nautilus ship and it's, you know, it's being attacked by dragons and then it crashes. And it's like, it's just great scenario to start you off in the game and then get you going into the role playing And every step of the way, you're just, you're drawn into the fascinating world and your decisions matter in Baldur's Gate 3. Like if I make a decision, it could change the world or the characters and the things that are going on. Not in Starfield. In Starfield, the stories have a predetermined ending. Your list of choices, they don't really matter. As a matter of fact, a lot of the times you would choose uh, certain choices and the character will just kind of ignore you or say, yeah, okay, whatever. Now and then, you know, you should choose one of the other options because they'll stop the choice that you chose is grayed out. Now one of the other options is there. It's like, I didn't want to choose any of those options. That's why I chose the option I chose. You don't get that in Boulder's gate three, you choose an option. That's it. Your character is, it affects your relationship with that NPC for the rest of the game. It affects how things are going to happen for the rest of the game. In Baldur's Gate 3, there's this uh, area where these druids live. Um, I forget what they call it. Uh, A grove. Yeah, it's a grove. And I went in, and in my first playthrough, I killed the big uh, head druid there. Well, all the rest of the druids, like, rebelled and killed everybody else in the grove who who were taking refuge there. Uh, When I, uh, in my other next playthrough, I didn't kill the uh, head druid. Instead, I, I just kind of persuaded the druid to do what I wanted to. And then when I came out, everybody wasn't murdered. (laughs) It's just amazing, completely world altering change based on my decisions, interacting with NPCs. And I mean, that's, I, you know, comparison, comparison, like that's kind of what I would like. But even so, if the storytelling was good, even if my choices didn't matter and I just got to go along for the ride with Bethesda's game with Starfield, that'd be fine. It's like watching a movie. I, I, don't, I can't change how a movie's ending. It's going to end the way it ends. And if so, uh, Starfield's uh, quests and storylines end the way they end, regardless of what you do, you're just going along for the ride. That'd be fine if I wasn't so bored. The first 12 hours, so many people are saying, ah, you got to invest 10 or 20 hours before it starts getting good. You got to be kidding me. 10 hours of a horrible, horrible interface. And I have to invest that much time before the game starts getting good. No, no, thank you. So thank you for listening to my rant. (laughs) Yeah. Starfield, if you're going to play it, it has, it's really taxing on your computer system. So if you want to run it, you know, on higher settings or even low settings and have a decent frame rate, you're going to need a good computer. So here's my sponsor plug. I own a Zydax computer. That's what I'm actually recording onto right now. They have a unlimited uh, or lifetime parts and labor warranty. One of the few companies in the world that does that I actually used that when my power supply went bad. Uh, they just they they repaired it and fixed it and replaced it for free. Use my link and you can check out their discounts and sales they have going on. It's uh, probably on the screen by now, or if not, it'll be in the description, but it's just jerockthevikingcom slash Zydex. So 
There you go. Oh, and a big thanks to all my patrons uh, and the people who support me and those of you who uh, support me on YouTube too. You can, you know, that little join button down there. Um, or there's a little thank you button too. If uh, you ever feel like hitting that and you want to, you know, help me buy a coffee or, or an ale or mead, uh, that that's my review. I guess that's my review of Starfield. I, I don't know. I wanted to love it. I wanted, I mean, it's not just, I didn't get what I want. Like that's not fair to any game because you want a certain thing and you don't get that like thing. Like I want continuity to travel between planet and space and, and all this stuff, like all that. But I, I didn't like the storylines. I hate the interface inventory management. And I am a broken record. If you play this back or if you're, Keeping a tally tab. Oh, he said it again. He said it again. UI and interface. UI, uh, interface and, and, and inventory. <laughs> he said it 12 times. He's just repeating himself. I apologize. Save your money if this sounds bad. But if you're already playing and you're enjoying it, I am very happy. I am happy when anybody finds something in this short life that we live that they enjoy. TV shows and movies, however bad I think they are as a filmmaker of 25 years, it doesn't matter if somebody else enjoys it. I'm just so happy for them. Now, yeah, I'm upset that there were all those time and resources and money spent on a thing that I didn't get to enjoy because I did not like the thing, video game or movie or TV show. But I'm glad that there's somebody out there that enjoys it. Not to mention the people that worked on it, right? Like there's so much love and expertise that goes into like a film, a TV show, a video game. And these people probably enjoyed it. I mean, at least I hope so. I know that there are some work environments, you know, that are better than others, but I hope the Bethesda team enjoyed it. Uh, it's a huge accomplishment. I mean, getting funding for anything, uh, big projects is, is not easy. And so if they enjoyed it, good for them and if you're enjoying playing that's awesome enjoy it every minute every moment don't listen to me or anybody else out there if they're not enjoying it or they think it's bad if you enjoy it that's awesome all right enough ranting enough rambling i seem like i'm just going on forever now because i just feel like talking about it because i'm actually so happy that i got the return at best buy <laughs> I wasn't sure if they would do it. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you like this format. I mean, I took the glasses off for all you here. No more uh, shiny glasses. There you go. Yeah. yeah, make it a little more personal, you know. Uh, see the eyes, the windows to the soul. Like, that's, that's what we do in filmmaking, you know, on screen. But uh, anyways, enough rambling. I'm done. Let me know in the comments if you like this, this format. I'm going to do more of this. I think I enjoy it. I just want to talk. I want to engage with you guys and, and gals out there and everybody. Uh, so that's it for now. Whether you're playing Starfield or not, have fun out there.